Open Access. This is an open access article distributed under the terms of the CC by license. Changes in permanent contraception procedures among young adults following the Dobbs decision. Jacqueline E. Ellison, Ph.D., Brittany L. Brown Podgorski, Ph.D., Jake R. Morgan, Ph.D., Introduction Supplemental Content. Author affiliations and article information are listed at the end of this article. On June 24, 2022, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization overturned the constitutional right to abortion, permitting states to further restrict or ban abortion care. As of January 2024, 21 states have done so. This structural barrier to exercising control over pregnancy and childbearing will indirectly affect contraceptive decision-making. Early research has documented increased demand for permanent contraception in the months following Dobbs, including tubal sterilization and vasectomy. This change may reflect fears of restricted access to abortion and or contraception. However, no research, to our knowledge, has evaluated the differential effect of Dobbs on permanent contraception among men relative to women or among younger adults who are more likely to have an abortion and to experience sterilization regret. We therefore evaluated changes in tubal ligation and vasectomy following Dobbs among younger adults. Methods. We use data from the Trinidex platform for this cross-sectional study. These continuously updated medical record data are largely from academic medical centers and affiliated clinics in all four U.S. Census regions. We used an interrupted time series study design fitting seasonally adjusted segmented autoregressive models to assess level and slope changes in procedure rates before and after Dobbs. Sensitivity analyses with a truncated pre-Dobbs observation window were conducted using STATA, version 17.1, StataCorp LLC. This research was deemed exempt from review and the need for informed consent by the Boston University Institutional Review Board owing to the use of didentif patient data. We followed the strobe reporting guideline using monthly aggregate counts of tubal legations and vasectomies. We calculated rates per 100 000 person months among female and male patients aged 18 to 30 years. Individuals with an encounter for evaluation and management each month and no permanent contraception documented previously were included in the denominator. Visits for evaluation and management, tubal sterilization and vasectomy procedures were identified using current procedural terminology and international statistical classification of diseases. Tenth revision codes, e in supplement one, two-sided P less than, indicated statistical significance, results observed permanent contraception procedure rates, estimates, and seasonally adjusted models for 22063348 person months, 36.9% male and 63.1% female are presented in the figure. Prior to Dobbs, the monthly permanent contraception rate increased by 2.84 and 1.03 procedures per 100 person months among female and male patients. Respectively, table Dobbs was associated with an immediate level increase of 58.02 procedures and 5.31 procedures per month among female patients. Among male patients, it was associated with a level increase of 26.99 procedures and no significant change in the number of procedures per month. Findings were robust to sensitivity analyses. Discussion. We observed an abrupt increase in permanent contraception procedures among adults aged 18 to 30 years following Dobbs. The increase in procedures for female patients was double that for male patients. These patterns offer insights into the gender dynamics of permanent contraceptive use and may reflect the disproportionate health, social, and economic consequences of compulsory pregnancy on women and people with the capacity to become pregnant. This study has several limitations. The Trinidex platform does not capture state or healthcare organization identifiers. We were therefore unable to assess the potential outcomes of state abortion policy or account for changes in the sample attributable to fluctuations in the organization's contributing data over the study period. Additionally, our findings do not provide insight into the differential experiences of black, indigenous, Hispanic, disabled, immigrant, and low-income women who disproportionately encounter interference and coercion in their contraceptive decision-making. The abrupt increase in permanent contraception rates may indicate a policy-induced change in contraceptive preferences.
Dobbs may have also increased a sense of urgency among individuals who were interested in permanent contraception before the decision. Changes in contraceptive decision-making must be considered to understand the short and long-term implications of Dobbs on reproductive autonomy.